sleep. Let's look at that. It's Dr. King here. So, about this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to the use of meters. So, we're going to uh, look at measuring voltages and currents, and we're going to do that based on our textbook. Uh, chapter 1.10 through to 1.12. So if I haven't mentioned it before, we can't see, hear, touch, taste or smell electricity. So it's a very abstract concept for us humans. So we have to use other devices to tell what's happening with the physics. One of those devices we use is called a meter. So the first meter we're going to look at is the voltmeter. Now there are a few different kinds of voltmeters. So let me just set up my screen pointer pen. If I get it set up I will. And we have the analog meter. So the good old analog meter literally has a dial with a needle. And with your set on voltage, current or ohms, the needle deflects, giving you a measurement. So in this particular case, we have a multimeter that can measure lots and lots of different things. We have a standard voltmeter which quite often if you go to an RTO or TAFE or something similar, they often just have single meters. That is a meter set up to be a voltmeter. Or you might have a digital multimeter. So here you can see a fluke digital multimeter. And again, it's been set onto volts here. And you use the range button to set DC or AC. In this particular case, it's been set for DC and our symbol or a DC voltmeter is this. So voltmeters can be used to measure voltage and they can be analog or digital. Of course the vast majority these days are digital. So connecting up a voltmeter. Voltmeters need to be connected in parallel across the load. So you can see here I've got one probe of the voltmeter, the positive, onto the positive side of the battery supply and the negative onto the negative supply. And I'm actually measuring the voltage that's being dropped across my load or my lamp in this particular case. So it's important here that we've got a 12 volt battery and because there's nothing else in our circuit using any of the voltage, it's only the load, then of course you can see it's measuring 12 volts on the deflection scale. But remember it's measuring the voltage across the load, we're not necessarily measuring the voltage across the battery. So as I said, it's in parallel and here's our load. Here's our meter, and our meter is in parallel. So all voltmeter measurements are always done in parallel. So what happens if we get an open circuit? So in this particular case, We've created an open circuit by opening the switch, a purposeful open circuit. There's no current flow, so no current flowing. Therefore, there is no potential difference across the load. See, the lamp is off. There's no potential difference across the lamp, and our meter reads zero volts. Again, we're still connected in parallel because we're measuring the voltage across the lamp 
we are not measuring the voltage across the battery. A voltage will only occur across the lamp if current flows through the lamp and we can't have any current because we have an open circuit because our switch is off. Now how about measuring current? Again, we can do that with an analog meter. Again, we have an analog multimeter. This time set to DC amps. We could also get a fixed ammeter. The symbol is just a circle with an A in it for ammeter. And here we have a fluke digital meter. And again, you can see here it's been set for amps. So next, ammeters are connected in series. So again, coming back to our little um, water flow analogy. If I want to know how many litres per second we're going through here, so a water meter measures litres per second, an ammeter measures amps or current. But rather than trying to measure electrons per second, we have a nice neat unit called amperes. So our amperes, in this particular case, we have to break into the circuit, we have to put our ammeter in series, so we go into the meter, the meter carries all the full load of the current back out of the meter and back to the load. So ammeters are connected in series. So here's our example. We've got a 12 volt battery, no lamp, there's no current flow because our switch is open. So no current flowing through the circuit, no current, zero amps. But as soon as we close our switch, all of a sudden we've got current flowing through the ammeter, and going through the coil inside the ammeter, back out through the lamp, through our element, back to the battery. And we've got current flow in this particular case we've got two amps of current flowing. So again, it's important to remember that our ammeter is always connected in series. So here's a circuit diagram of our previous connection. Here's our battery. Our switch, and you'll note the switch is open, so no current, no lamp, so this would now read zero amps, and you'll note that it's connected in series. If you don't get the polarity correct on your ammeter, the needle will read backwards or you'll get a negative display. So if you're using a digital one, it doesn't matter because it'll just give you a negative display. And if you're using an analog meter, the needle will want to go the opposite direction. So you've got to be careful that you don't connect an analog meter the, back the wrong way, otherwise you could damage the meter. So now we're still connected in series, but of course now we've got the switch closed which now means we have current flowing through our circuit. So the ammeter will read a current of some kind and of course our lamp will turn on and glow. So 
So I made a connection. So meta connections are very important. Polarity. The positive lead of a meter should connect to the positive voltage. The polarity of a meter only applies to DC voltages and currents. So a polarity is only a DC thing. Range. Normally start with the highest possible range on your meter. That way you'll do the least amount of damage to the meter or to the circuit. If the range is too low, your reading won't be high enough. So here, if your range is too low, this needle won't go far enough up the scale. You won't be able to do an accurate reading. If your range is too low, then you'll bang the needle up the scale too far. If your range is just right, it will read somewhere in centre scale. We're where most analog meters are built to read their most accurate. So again, voltmeters are connected in parallel. So let's have a spend a little bit of time here for a moment and let's look at this one. We're measuring the lamp of voltage here. So on this one, switch open. No current, we'll read zero volts. Here, on this one, I'm measuring the battery voltage. So let's say our battery for our example here is a 12 volt battery. So whether the switch is open or closed, our meter is going to read 12 volts. So we're measuring the voltage across the battery not the voltage across the load. And finally, if we put the voltmeter across the switch, we're going to measure the voltage from here across here. So when the switch is open, it's going to read 12 volts, assuming we have a 12 volt battery, of course. Of course, effectively here, We've got each lead connected across the battery. So we're not across the load, but we're across the switch. When we close the switch, of course, then the voltage would drop down to zero volts and the lamp would come on and the voltage across the lamp would be 12 volts. So it's important to remember, voltmeters are connected in parallel. Ammeters. Ammeters are connected in series, remember? We've been harping on about this a little bit. Ammeters are always in series, can't be avoided. You've got to break into the circuit. So here we can see an ammeter in series. The switch is open. So the current will be zero amps. Over here, same circuit, but I've put the ammeter in a slightly different place. But still, it's the current in the total circuit. So switch is open, I'm still going to read amps will equal zero. But once I close the circuit, then the ammeter will read the current in the circuit. So it doesn't matter where the ammeter goes, as long as it's in series with the part of the circuit where you want to measure the current. So we're going to summarize the entire chapter here. Electrical power is transmitted over high voltage transmission lines and distributed over lower voltage power lines. The electrotechnology industry has over 20 qualification areas, each requiring knowledge of electrical principles, including electrical, electronics, etc. You should be aware of the applicable WHS Act and Environmental Protection Acts that apply where you work. Sustainable energy is made up of two parts, renewable energy and energy efficiency. Remember, a lot of our renewables now come from gas and wind and um, solar and efficiency from LED lighting, things the like. 
Remember, voltage is the electrical pressure between two points. It is measured in volts and its symbol is V. Voltage is measured by connecting a voltmeter across or in parallel with the component in the circuit. So when you measure the voltage across the component, you must put your voltmeter in parallel. Current is the flow of electrons that flows only if there is a voltage and a connecting path. Current is measured in amperes, we use the letter A, and its symbol is capital I, and it's measured in an ammeter connected in series. So we use an ammeter in series to measure current. One amp is one coulomb flowing for one second. So if you have one amp and it flows for one second, you have created one coulomb of energy. Resistance, we use R, is opposition to current flow, and it's measured in ohms, and we use the symbol omega. A conductor has a low resistance, an insulator has very high resistance. A basic electric circuit has a voltage source, a switch, conductors, and a load. A circuit diagram shows how the components are connected. An open circuit prevents current flow. A closed circuit allows current to flow. A short circuit is a fault that can cause too much current to flow. Voltmeters and ammeters can be either analog or digital and are either standalone or part of a multimeter. The polarity of a meter is important when measuring a DC value. When measuring an unknown voltage or current, select a meter's highest possible range, then select a range that gives a clear reading. So that's the end of Lesson 1, Part D. I hope you've enjoyed your first set of lessons on DC with Dr. Ken.